All right, guys, so today's video is going to be a little bit of a different format. Of course, I did have a wonderful, wonderful time out in more lava fields in East Idaho. However, the audio was basically trash. So I'm going to use this as an opportunity to do a little bit of a rant on the firearms industry. Uh, but before we get into that, I want to first say the creamy macaroni and cheese mountain house definitely ranks below the uh, breakfast skillet. However, it was, it was okay. Um, I don't know if I'll ever buy it again. I've heard many of Mountain House's meals are just spectacular. I don't think anyone's talking about this one. Um, it was okay. I, I think I'm going to pass on it next time around. I would maybe, you know, if you're going to buy it, pack it for like a lunch or something, but I really think Mountain House does have better offerings. That uh, root beer though was totally fire. So the topic I wanted to talk about today was about warranties. Now I know that's very exciting, but let me tell you why this topic has been bugging me for so long. Uh, some of you know that I have a YouTube short up where I am complaining about the Holosun HM3X, specifically the mount. The glass on that optic is really, really, really impressive, but the mount is very, very flimsy. It's a uh, Maybe you could call it airsoft grade, although I don't think any serious airsofter would want to mount that flimsy. So, But nonetheless, it's just not very impressive. And I would steer clear of the optic for now, um, not because of its good qualities, obviously, but because of its fatal shortcomings. If a mount on, on your optic fails, your optic functionally fails. Your optic's one job is to help you put rounds on target accurately and to do so for as long as you need the weapon, right? And so if your optic fails to stay securely mounted, um, yeah, I don't know about you. I, in my opinion, that's a total failure of the optic, right? It's not to say Holosun as a company is a bad company. Holosun has a wonderful warranty. Um, and I, I don't even know if it's like an official warranty or if it's just the fact that there's, you know, a Chinese company, right? I mean, they will happily replace the whole optic before you even tell them what's wrong with it. You know, that's just kind of the nature of a lot of these Chinese companies. So, um, yeah, Holosun has a great warranty. Vortex has an incredible warranty. Everyone knows about the Vortex warranty, right? You could intentionally shoot it yourself and they will still replace the whole thing for you. No questions asked. Trigicon, as far as I know, has a very similar warranty. And by the way, this goes beyond just optics, but I'm just using optics because I think that's a great example of this. And what bugs me so much about this is that people will use the warranty as a selling point. If you ever watch a review for a Vortex Optic, um, people will always bring up the warranty. And I'm, I'm a user of a Vortex Optic, the Spitfire 5X, which, by the way, to this day, I still think it's a very impressive optic. But people will just shove the fact that there's a warranty down your throat. Here's why I don't think warranties should be used as a selling point. Let me give you an example. Let's say it's the middle of the apocalypse, right? You and your little band of uh, maybe it's your family, maybe it's your buddies, whatever. You're migrating to a different part of the country where it's going to be safer, where you think, I don't know, maybe you'll have access to water or, or whatever. Well, unfortunately, the California water bandits, they, uh, they start shooting at you, right? And your freaking Vortex Strike Eagle 1 to 6 takes a bullet right through the lens. And, uh, well, it's busted. But you know what's so great is you have that Vortex warranty. So you put the firefight on pause, and uh, you send that optic back to Vortex. And what's so great is they're able to replace it for you for completely free. Isn't that wonderful? No, because it's the SHTF. It's the Boogaloo. There's no warranty service. There's no Vortex. There's no logistics. The fact that your optic has a lifetime warranty doesn't mean anything because it's the end of of the world. <laughs> Do you see why this is so annoying to me? Listen, I, I think part of the disconnect here is that I think on some level, people don't realize that guns and optics are products. Let me explain what I mean by that. There is a gun industry. There is an optics industry. There is a tactical civilian industry, just like how there's a car industry or a video game industry or a freaking computer monitor industry. There's all sorts of different industries out there. And within every industry, there's brands who want to push talking points so that you can buy their stuff. For example, everyone will talk, you know, so great about LPVO. So they have a perfect one X and, you know, you can crank it up to six X if you really need to reach out and shoot at somebody. And no one will tell you the downsides of LPVO. So I don't think Vortex or Burris or Trigicon are going to go out telling you the shortcomings of LPVO. So maybe the one X isn't so great or how they're very, very heavy. It's not to say LPVOs are bad, but you have to understand 
The companies that make this stuff are not in the business of telling you the shortcomings of their stuff. Stuff like this isn't even that big of a deal in, under, in other industries. For example, if you don't know the, the differences between an Intel uh, CPU and an AMD CPU, it's not like your family is going to die over it, right? <laughs> Maybe your game runs at like 5 to 10 FPS slower than if you bought the other processor. It's not that big of a deal. But where the differences come in is that personally, I'm buying this stuff because I am pretty darn convinced, along with many other people who are far smarter than me, I'm pretty convinced that at some point between now and 20 years, things are going to uh, hit the fan in a very major way. There are all sorts of things that are set up that if any of them happened, society would collapse and we would be back in the Stone Age. And that is when all this gear goes from being a cute hobby and uh, adult Legos to being something that is a very serious life-saving tool. You know, you can name it, right? The Torrid Meteor Stream, EMPs, Accidental Nuclear War, Purposeful Nuclear War, right? Some kind of civil uh, conflict, right? Maybe a, a hunger strike. Like, I don't know. There's, there's all sorts of random crap that could happen that would immediately turn these things from, you know, cute uh, side hobbies to being incredibly important pieces of equipment. So that is where we, as members of this community, that's where we need to be very, very careful and diligent to make sure that we're not falling for all the shortcomings that other industries have. For example, I'm sure, you know, maybe you, you or yourself or someone in your family is super into Nike sneakers, right? And then maybe there's someone else that's super into Adidas, right? And they, uh, you know, they have brand loyalty. I don't necessarily think there's anything wrong with that, but we see this all the time in the gun industry, right? Look at EOTech, for example. EOTech has an enormous following, right? Like the EOTech EXPS3, it has so much drip, it hurts. It is such a beautiful, good-looking optic on a gun. I mean, it is so sexy. But let's evaluate the EOTech when compared to its competitors, right? The Aimpoint T2 has like tens of thousands of battery life, <laughs> tens of thousands of hours of battery life. It is probably more durable, as far as I'm aware. It is far lighter. It's far more versatile in that you can mount it on a handgun if you really wanted to. You can mount it off to this offset um, with, you know, with when paired with a magnified optic. Like the Aimpoint T2, it basically looks as good under night vision as the EOTech EXPS3 as far as I know. There's really no reason to get an EOTech EXPS3 over an Aimpoint T2. But what, what optic looks better, right? An EOTech EXPS3. Even though the EO, EOTech EXPS3, it's way heavier. It's got a minuscule amount of battery life when compared to the Aimpoint T2. It's kind of got annoying function settings. I mean, I think as a dedicated night vision device, from what I can tell, it probably works better. But the Aimpoint T2 is overall the better choice. But the EOTech EXPS3 is going to continue to sell because, again, it's got so much drip, it hurts. And it's got brand loyalty. Now... Is that a life-changing decision to get an EOTech EXPS3 over an Aimpoint T2? I think, you know, you could say it's ridiculous to say that it is. But, I mean, seriously, if your optic is dead and out of batteries, it doesn't matter how cool it looks, right? It doesn't matter that all the influencers on Instagram and YouTube ran EOTechs. Do you see what I'm saying? And so this is just something where... It's very important that we are being careful and that we are being diligent with our brand loyalties. And so here's what I would say. If you're thinking about building out an AR-15, say, you know, just like a general purpose rifle, because AR-15s are expensive, right? Guns are expensive, and you just want one rifle that can kind of do everything. Seriously, do your research. What kind of capabilities do you want? Do you think you're going to want magnification? I mean, chances are you are going to want magnification because... Every environment on the planet where you would want to use an AR-15, you're probably going to need or at least desire magnification. What does that look like? Are, are you okay with it being a little bit heavy? Are you okay spending a little bit of extra money to get a little more capability? Things like this. And, you know, as you watch reviews and as you read material and as you try out your buddy's stuff, you're going to run into everyone wanting to justify their purchase or justify their brand. And it's just something that you have to be very, very careful of. Again, it's not to say that EOTechs are bad products or aim points or Trigicons. I'm not saying that at all. I'm just saying we have to be conscious and aware of the fact that people buy stuff like this all the time. They go into debt over stuff like this over time. 
and they will do everything they can to justify their debt, to justify their purchase. Because no one wants to be wrong over $1,000 worth of red dot or $1,000 worth of scope or whatever. So anyway, I guess my point with this entire video is be very, very careful and understand that the gun industry is an industry like any other, except for the fact that instead of buying, you know, sneakers or graphics cards or cars, you're buying something that you might need to rest your life on. So be very, very careful with it. Don't fall for these stupid arguments just because it says lifetime warranty that doesn't make it a good product. Don't care about whether or not it has a lifetime war- warranty. Care about whether or not it's going to last you a lifetime. There are products out there that I believe will last you a lifetime, and it's on you to find those things and to buy once and cry once, right? So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video format. I hope you enjoyed the background footage. It really was um, it was a little more bland, I'm going to be honest, <laughs> than some of the other places that I've uh, done my expeditions, but it was kind of nice. It was pleasant. So I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Leave your thoughts in the comments below. Did, did I make any sense? Did I make any coherent points? What are your thoughts? Are you are, is this something that you've been thinking about or am I crazy? Is this all completely manufactured in my head? Uh, tell me what you think below. Thank you so much, guys. Have a wonderful, wonderful day.